a room back in Britain. I didn't have to travel this time. And so it's a bit uh, different because I can't see uh, you. And uh, I know there are some friends in the room. And uh, it's nice to see you guys, even if it's only virtually. Uh, just a few words about uh, this talk. Uh, this is not the, the talk I was supposed to give originally. Um, I was supposed to give uh, to give it in, well, in the flesh, actually. And uh, speaking of flesh, I was going to talk about uh, stereoscopic nudes from a, um, a collection in Switzerland. But uh, there, seem to, there seems to be a problem with nudity and Zoom, so we had to change the talk. And so now uh, this uh, talk will be virtual and about fleshless creatures. So maybe it's appropriate that uh, a talk about flesh and, and blood ladies would uh, only take place in the flesh and a talk about virtual fleshless ghost should take virtually right so the talk is called that's the spirit ghosts in the stereoscope and other special effects the land of ghosts uh, and uh, the 19th century the victorian era has been called the golden age of ghosts uh, now if you if you look at the screen you will see uh, some pages from uh, websites this this one is from the national trust website and if you go on Google and look for the National Trust website, you would see pages upon pages of our most haunted places. So ghosts are still very popular in Britain and, uh, and people like, still like them and they, they like to visit uh, places which are reportedly haunted. Uh, here is now another website, Haunted Britain and Ireland, where you can learn everything you need to know about ghosts ghost stories, ghost photographs, haunted history, and they'll even give you um, an A to Z guide to all the haunted places, all the ghost walks and tours in Britain. So you can have a ghost tour in Canterbury or in Chester or in York or in Edinburgh, lots of places. So if you can ever come back to Britain when one, uh, once all the, um, the restrictions have been eased, go and see one of those uh, ghost walks and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy the experience. Now, ghosts um, are very popular in Britain, but they were not invented in Britain, obviously, and they uh, actually date back to the antiquity. So uh, they are mentioned already, spirits, spirits of dead people are already mentioned in the antiquity. And um, in uh, book 11 of Homer's um, Odysseus, oh, sorry, that's the wrong, uh, wrong Homer, uh, okay. that's Homer. <laughs> uh, so in book 11 of uh, Homer's Odysseus, uh, Ulysses goes down to Hades to meet the ghost of Tiresias, the prophet, and he, because he wants to know what, uh, how he can get back to his house. And while there, he meets the spirits of his dead companions and also of his dead mother, and when he tries to clasp her, you know, his arms uh, close upon nothing. So even in, uh, in Homer, um, there is this idea that ghosts are, they can talk to you, they can, you can talk to them, they can hear you, but you can't touch them, you actually go through them. Uh, so that's interesting because uh, it's a very long time ago. Uh, now let's jump uh, forward a few uh, thousand years and uh, this is one of the very first photographs ever. Uh, it is a daguerreotype by uh, the inventor of the process, Louis-Jacques Mondé Daguerre, and it shows the Boulevard du Temple in Paris. And this is probably the first person ever photographed and as you can see it's a sort of ghostly figure. It's just a, a man who was, having, who was having his shoes polished and he stayed long enough to, um, for, the, for the camera to capture his, his shadow, his shape. All the other people in the, in the picture have disappeared because of the long exposure. So this is the first photographic ghost, unfortunately, uh, not a stereoscopic one. Uh, this is uh, 1855, uh, the, the uh, exhibition in Paris. And if you look at the bottom of the picture, you'll see ghosts of the visitors. The people who um, were sitting didn't move very much, so you can see them, they are solid, 
But uh, some people were walking, they stopped for a moment to look at an, one of the exhibits and then they walked away. And so they only left a very slight trace on the, on the daguerreotype, on the surface uh, of the, the plate, and uh, they appear as ghosts. This is uh, taken around 1855 or 6, and this time you see the ghost of a dog. So the, the family group is okay, but a, a dog was curious and came to see what was going on. And uh, somebody probably told him to uh, shoo away. And uh, so you can only see the ghost of the, of the dog. You can see his tail next to, uh, next to the, the shoes of the, one of the men here, on the, on the, one of the men on the, on the left. So uh, there are also ghosts of animals in, uh, in uh, stereos and uh, photographs because uh, well, it's difficult to, to tell them to stay, to stand still, and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes they do what they want. Uh, now, ghosts have become, became really important in stereo photography in 1856, when uh, this man, Sir David Brewster, published his book on the stereoscope. Um, the book is mostly interesting because of um, all the chapters devoted to the, the applications of the stereoscope to various purposes. And chapter 14 is application of the stereoscope to purposes of amusement. And in, in this chapter, uh, Brewster describes how it is possible to create a stereoscopic see-through ghost in, uh, with a photograph. And he explains it in detail, so we know that uh, the people who are supposed to be frightened have to stand still for m maybe 20 seconds, and the person playing the ghost will only yeah, stand still for the... half that uh, uh, length of time, and then disappear, or wait for 10 seconds, and then walk into the scene, and uh, be there till the end. So the, the, the camera will have captured the, what was behind the body of the, the person playing the ghost and uh, of parts of uh, the ghost itself and so you get this stereoscopic effect. So this was in 1856 and uh, less than a year later people were actually uh, experimenting with this. Uh, on stage uh, the ghost was already there, it was the ghost of uh, Hamlet's father and this is one uh, very early photograph of a theatrical play for the stereoscope and as you can see the ghost is just an actor in an armor he's not see-through at all he's very solid here is another one by uh, alfred sylvester again this is more um, a staged scene showing uh, hamlet and the ghost and there is no real uh, attempt at making the ghost transparent uh, this is another one from uh, Sylvester, with, um, again with Hamlet, Gertrude, Queen Gertrude, and his father. So this time he actually managed very well, so well that you can hardly see the ghost. You can see his foot, you can see his foot next to the, the cloak of the, the, the queen uh, to the left, and you can see something very, very uh, see-through, so he's, he's hardly visible. Uh, it was quite difficult actually to, uh, it, to uh, know exactly how long you were supposed to uh, stay in front of the camera to, to get uh, only the, the right impression. So this is uh, a bit, maybe too much. Uh, in the press, in uh, July 1857, uh, the, the stereoscopic depot, Gladwell Stereoscopic Depot, mentions the first phantom slide or ghost in the stereoscope. And uh, they don't give the name of the photographer. It's only, we only know it's a new photographer. So uh, we, we will never know the, the identity of this uh, person who uh, actually made the first phantom slide. So that was July 1857. Uh, soon after, the London Stereoscopic Company published that image. And as you can see here again, uh, the ghost looks very solid. There is not uh, nothing uh, really transparent about him. So he looks like another actor in the, in, the, in the scene because he probably stayed too long for the camera to capture only a, a vague silhouette of him. And here is another example. This one is a bit better, but still not very see-through, a bit too solid for a ghost. So this mu these must be uh, early attempts at, at ghost photographs. 
And uh, we have here, for the first time in the press, in the Times, on the 28th of August, 1857, ghost in the stereoscope, a frightic, a frightening, sorry, the rustic gamblers. So uh, this, this is interesting because uh, uh, it was, um, the photos were meant to be bought by people living in cities, city dwellers, and so, of course, these uh, people living in cities were not afraid of ghosts. It was good for people living in the countryside. And they say they describe the ghost, quite spiritual, material objects being visible through his body. Well, so far we have seen that they were quite solid, but they got better, and uh, this is uh, what they came up with later on. And this time the ghost looks very, very supernatural, and you can see people, uh, you can see a man jumping uh, out of the window, you can see uh, another uh, person uh, praying, kneeling and praying behind a table, somebody cowering and trying to protect themselves from, uh, from the ghost. So this is a bit, a bit uh, better already, and, uh, and this, this was a very popular slide. So they carried on. So July, June, July, August, and then suddenly by the, the end of the year, um, there were more and more advertisements and uh, the descriptions became more and more uh, detailed. Uh, one, one of the rustic gamblers rushes up the chimney and other precipitates himself out of the window while others are paralyzed by terror. The ghost is marvelously spiritual and again, you can see through him. So two shillings, for two shillings, you could have uh, um, a copy of that ghost in the stereoscope and there was a nice article in the art journal of this month, November 1857. And for the first time, the Lunar Stereoscopic Company mentions where they got the idea. This wonderful slide has been kindly suggested to the company by Sir David Brewster. So we, we, we know that uh, he mentioned it in his book and uh, the Lunar Stereoscopic Company at the time was very much uh, in touch with uh, David Brewster. And so he suggested uh, the idea of the ghost in the stereoscope. So here are some more examples. Uh, so variants, there were lots of variants. You can see again, somebody trying to escape through the window and somebody trying to go up the chimney to hide from the ghost. And they, they carried on with the, the, the advertisements, stereoscopic marvel, a ghost, etc. again, uh, suggested by uh, Sir David Booster. And there is a note at the bottom as the demand for this slide is enormous. Orders can only be executed in the order in which they are sent. So from the very start, this uh, slide was very popular and uh, the London Stereoscopic Company produced dozens and dozens of negatives of the slides in order to meet the demand. So here is another example. This one is uh, very nicely tinted. And again, so there are lots and lots of variants. Uh, in, in the press at the time, they, they, they mentioned two slides and then six, and then, and then they stopped counting them because there are literally dozens of variants of uh, the ghost in the stereoscope. There is another one, another one which is nicely colored too. So there are lots of those. And actually, if you look at them all, you can, you can see in which order they were made. That, uh, this would be uh, going too much into detail, so I won't, I won't go there. But they are interesting to study and uh, to study carefully. Uh, there was a competition for the ghost uh, in November 1557. Uh, the wonderful crocodile to be seen in Negretti and Zambra's magnificent Egyptian stereoscopic collection of views. So um, the London Stereoscopic Company was offering a ghost. Negretti and Zambra, their um, direct competitors, were showing a crocodile and this crocodile had been photographed by Francis Frith and was part of his views of Egypt which were released at the same time 1857. Uh, uh, people had never seen crocodiles I mean they, they may have um, they, they, there were not many crocodiles in zoos even even in London so this was quite uh, exciting for them to see uh, this uh, monstrous creature Look, it looks really like a monster, especially when, when you have never seen one. So this was a direct competitor to the ghost uh, from the stereoscopic company. Now, the slider uh, of the ghost by the stereoscopic company proved so popular 
that they were soon pirated and spurious copies of their registered slides. So they went to the trouble of registering their slide, but some some people pirated the slide, made copies, and they sold them cheap, cheaply. So they decided that from that moment on, all genuine copies would be uh, with the, the following caption, kindly suggested by Sir David Booster, K.H., and enter the station, stationer's hall. So on the, on the following um, prints of the uh, ghost um, slide, you would see this printed on the back. So this is an example. Here, the ghost in the stereoscope, as you can see, can be suggested by Sir David Booster. And this is a label uh, printed on one of the, uh, stuck on one of the, the cards as well. So you have exactly what they say in the advertisement. And that's, of course, to avoid pirated copies. So even in 1857, when something was popular, it was copied very, very, very quickly. Now, this is interesting because this Mr. Wingrave in Coventry was selling three, three wonderful slides, the wonderful crocodile, the ghost in the stereoscope, and the mysteries of the cream leaf. So that was the third competitor, and you can see in the, the other one, uh, below, the mysteries of Crinoline, the ghost, and the alarm rustics, and other stereoscopic novelties. So, they, people were actually uh, trying to compete with uh, the success of the ghost, and this was the first time uh, there, there was such a demand for stereoscopic views, funny of the funny sort, except the crocodile maybe, uh, because it was just before Christmas, so it was the, the present to uh, be uh, given uh, at Christmas in 1857. So if you had lived in uh, Britain in 1857, you would probably have got one of those slides for Christmas. So here is one of the mysteries of the crinoline. Uh, so this uh, crinoline was uh, this uh, metal petticoat women used to wear under their, their skirts. And uh, you can see uh, now the lady with the skirt on. So. Uh, actually, it would be a good idea, now that COVID-19 is upon us, to uh, reintroduce the crinoline because ladies would uh, be able to social distance without <laughs> any problem at all. If they added uh, just a mask on their faces, it would be perfect, really. Not very convenient to get into a car or on a bus or on a train, but to uh, keep your distance, it's perfect. So here is another example, and here is a good example of keeping your distance. This is a man on the right is trying to kiss the lady who happens to be under the mistletoe, but she's so far away from him because of a crinoline that he can't. So maybe there is an idea there. If there is anybody in the fashion industry listening, maybe it's time to do something. Here is another example here, two people sitting on a bench. Or the gentleman is sitting on the very edge of the bench because, again, he, the lady is taking all the room. Now, there was another ghost which appeared, and this one was by Chapuis. Chapuis was a... Um, he had a patented a new reflecting stereoscope, and his ghost was called the Judge Ghost. In most of the ghost slides, uh, the ghost is actually, uh, has actually come to warn people or to tell them that... Uh, they have behaved badly, they need to change their ways, uh, hence the, the ghost of frightening the rustic gamblers. And uh, this, this uh, slide is a bit strange because uh, I've never seen any slide with that title. And the only one which looks like it could be a, a good contestant is this one here. Not a very good copy, I'm afraid, but that's the only one I could find. And this is the only one with the Chapuis blind stem. So this could be the judge ghost, uh, which wants to compete with the uh, learned stereoscopic ghost in the stereoscope. But this, this is pure conjecture. I have no, uh, no proof because there was no title behind the, behind the card. Now, 4th of February, 1858, the learned stereoscopic company have to apologize to their friends and their customers because of the delay in the execution of their orders. The demand is so enormous that they can't meet it. Now, you have to remember that uh, in those days, when you wanted to print a photograph, you needed a negative and a piece of paper. You put the piece of paper 
be well below the negative and you exposed the whole thing to the light you didn't have any electricity then so you had to expose the paper to the light so uh, if you wanted to print uh, 100 photos you had you needed 100 negatives and 100 frames printing frames and you needed to put them all outside but february january december uh, there's, there's not much light in Britain, and especially in London at the time, it was very uh, smoky and uh, foggy and smoggy. And so it was very difficult to, uh, to meet the demand. So that's why they had to apologize. They couldn't print fast enough. So, and they mentioned they have now several hundred negatives. So one negative, one print. They couldn't, they couldn't do any faster. So that's why... They there was this delay and uh, they had to apologize in the press. And this is something you see quite often when there was a very popular slide. So here is a, a later one here. They are getting better and better at it. Uh, very nicely, uh, very nicely composed. And, and the ghost is really see-through. So they, started, they carried on publishing uh, dozens upon dozens of slides with lots of variants always people being afraid of the ghost of course that was the idea that was uh, what people wanted to see so this one is a as a sort of story we know the, the name of the, the ghost this is the ghost of jim stubbs so uh, on the on the on the wall on the left you can see jim stubbs his cottage and his picture so you have a rough drawing of, of jim uh, stubbs and you see also how he died he died on the gallows, and now his ghost has come to uh, has come back to tell people, to warn people, please behave differently. Uh, I was a bad boy, and see what happened to me. So here is another one from a, a Jim Stubbs uh, series. So again, again, lots of variants, and all the variants were used because uh, didn't matter. People uh, didn't ha have to know there were variants, and that. Uh, they would buy the, the, the card anyway. This one is a different, slightly different setting, but a very, very convincing ghost here. Just the right amount of a see-through and uh, again, the people looking terrified. So they made some, uh, uh, they, they chose some other background. So this one is outside, the ghost in the lane. So the person praying, please ghost, don't uh, hurt me. And uh, another one here, and another variant. So every time, lots and lots of variants, because the more variants and negative they had, the more prints they could produce. And they are quite good, actually. They, they, they are becoming very good at that game. Now, there were people who were not convinced. And this is a photograph by Martin Laroche. Martin Laroche was actually uh, uh, Alfred Sylvester's brother. But he had chosen another name, not to uh, compete with his brother. And this one is called The Original Ghost, kindly suggested by an old boy. Not very, not very nice to Mr. Brewster. And photographed by Mr. Lara. So he, he, advertised, he advertises himself. And he says, we trust the public will be able to see through it. So it's all, uh, it's all big publicity. It's all about... Uh, making money and this ghost is not even a real ghost it's a it's a pumpkin with a, a sheet and you can see at the very left the, the face of a boy so there is the boy hiding behind this original ghost so uh, Martin Laroche was not impressed by uh, this uh, ghost mania and he wanted to show that uh, he could see through it as other people tried uh, their hand at a uh, ghost photograph. This is by uh, uh, Claudius Erskine Goodman, the, the person who took the first photos of um, Florence Nightingale. And uh, so this is a, lady, a young lady, a servant, probably being uh, frightened by a ghost. And this is the ghost appearing to the miser. So he's hiding his money and the ghost is there to tell him instead of a uh, hiding your money and you should give it to the poor and lead a better life or something of the kind because this is what ghosts were supposed to do they were there to warn you uh, this is from france so there is no title at all 
we, we don't know who the photographer was, uh, but you can see on the left of the ghost a very nice stereoscope on a stand, which we could have that stereoscope in the collection. And people are afraid of, again, of gamblers, people drinking and gambling, and uh, uh, people are afraid of the ghost. This one is, is funny. The, the person is actually so frightened that you can only see uh, uh, his bottom uh, in the, uh, up in the air and the ghost uh, telling him off. So that's from the same photographer, anonymous photographer, unfortunately. And here is another variant of the same scene, same people. Uh, the nice things in, in this uh, image, of course, you can see the, the thing they used to uh, take off their boots at the bottom, bottom right here. So there are lots of uh, very nice things to, uh, to uh, explore in this image. And that, that's what's fascinating about stereo. You can spend hours looking at all the details, the pictures on the wall, the, the pictures, uh, all, the, all the, the, the usual things they use, the, the candlesticks and everything. Uh, here is another one from the same guy, but this time a slightly different, uh, different um, setting. You can see the cold, uh, the, the cold bucket. You can see lots of things here again. So uh, very interesting these images to show how people lived. Now, this is, um, this is one, uh, we, are, we are back to the London Stereoscopic Company's uh, um, slides. And this is one actually after um, a drawing by John Leach, an illustration from uh, uh, Charles Dickens's uh, Christmas Carol. And this is exactly the moment when you should hear this why do you doubt your senses? Because the littlest thing can affect them. The slight disorder of the stomach can make them cheat. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blunt of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a, a fragment of underdone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you. So this famous uh, sentence, there is more of gravy than of grave about you, uh, it has to be explained, maybe. Uh, the Victorians believe that... Uh, Things you ate could uh, cause uh, hallucinations, and uh, they were responsible especially for nightmares. So, uh, if you had mustard uh, for dinner, or if you had uh, uh, some cheese, strong cheese, which uh, you couldn't digest, maybe it would give you uh, hallucinations and also bad dreams. We will uh, go back to that uh, a bit later. And here is another uh, scene from the same story. Marley's ghost terrifying uh, Scrooge. Uh, he, he gets very angry, the ghost, and Scrooge says, I do believe, I believe, I believe. And then he asks him what he, why he has come, and you know the rest of the story. Now, what's interesting about this, these two images, they are not very good quality, but they are difficult to find in good quality, is that they, were, uh, they, they, they came with a part of the story on the back. So this is an extract from uh, Dickens's uh, text, and it says so on the back, Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And what is even more interesting is that they were made while Dickens was still alive. So the slide must be around 1857-58, um, and this photograph, this stereo photograph by Dickens pretending to write, was made by Herbert Watkins also in 1858. So it's, uh, the, two, the, the images are contemporary. And it's, it, I, it would be interesting to uh, to know what Dickens thought of uh, of this uh, ghost mania and uh, of the use of his Marley and Scrooge uh, for for slides. But unfortunately, oh, Mr. sorry. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know because he didn't he didn't uh, say anything about it. Sorry about that. Now. Uh, Dickens has another connection with ghosts a bit later on, in uh, 1862, John Henry Pepper uh, set up for the stage uh, one, another one of his stories, uh, written in 1848, uh, The Haunted Man. And uh, John Henry Pepper is best remembered for the Pepper's Ghost, uh, a sort of theatrical illusion using, uh, using glass, pane of glass, and uh, Pepper did not actually invent this illusion. It was invented by one Henry Turks. And Pepper always said that uh, he was not the inventor, but his name stuck to the, uh, the, the illusion because 
he was the one who actually uh, used this for the first time in the theatre in London in 1862 to, uh, for the production of The Haunted Man by uh, Charles Dickens. So Dickens, uh, actually, uh, uh, Dickens's ghosts were used uh, for the stereoscope by the Stereoscopic Company and again uh, later on in 1862 again by the London Stereoscopy Company because of this illusion of Pepper's Ghost. So this, these are two engravings showing how it works. So you've got real actors on stage and you've got one below the stage dressed up as a ghost and lit by a projector. And when the ghost is lit and there is uh, his reflection is uh, seen by the spectators on the pane of glass and uh, it looks as if uh, he were actually uh, real and could, uh, and then the actors could walk through him. So it was a very clever illusion and people were impressed and so they flocked to the theatre to see The Haunted Man. Now this is how it works. Uh, so I've, I've uh, chosen a frame, a piece of glass, and you can see a photographer and his model and you can see where the ghost is. The ghost is not actually next to the man, but because of the reflection, you see the ghost next to the person. So let's see that a bit closer. So this is what the photographer is supposed to see when uh, he's taking this photo, and this is what he gets in the end. So this is how it works. The, the pepper, so the, the man is actually dressed as a lady, and just because of the illusion of Pepper's ghost, and the lady is nowhere, nowhere near him. She's just on the side and only seen, you can only see a reflection through the glass. So a very clever, very clever trick and used uh, nowadays for videos. You can actually project videos and that's why sometimes you can have a dead singer singing with a, another person apparently live on the stage. So a very useful illusion. And so, of course, the London Stereoscopic Company could not let that pass and they had a, a, new, a new wave of ghosts and this one, the first one was called The Haunted Man and, as you can see here, they dedicated it by permission to Professor Pepper. So this is The Haunted Man by the London Stereoscopic Company and you can see through the lady here, you can see the, the table with the, the chemical set here and the man kneeling. So this is from, um, this is from The Haunted Man. And so they carried on. So this is the ghost of Milton and the student, and the student is actually um, running his soul through the ghost, and uh, the ghost uh, doesn't care. This one is uh, the ghost of Shakespeare appearing to a chemistry student. Why chemistry student? I don't know, but there you are. So again, the ghost of Shakespeare this time. And this one, again, Shakespeare appearing to another student. And what I like most about this picture, apart from the ghost, of course, is the, the falling book. How did they do that? Uh, the book seems to be falling, and we know it's not possible because the, 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 there was no instantaneous uh, photography at the time. So they used a clever trick, apparently, to uh, make the book look as if it were falling. And you have the meeting of the two ghosts, Milton and Shakespeare meeting and having a chat about their respective works. And uh, that's a funny, funny slide. Uh, the Lund Stereoscopic Company made fun of the cartoon mania. Um, after 1860, uh, the stereoscope was not so popular. And stereoscopic cards were not so popular either. And because they had been dethroned by the cards de visite. Card de visite was a smaller format, it was cheaper. And most importantly, it showed the person who had gone to the photographer. So it was a bit like selfies today. People wanted to see themselves. And here you have Mr. and Mrs. Ghost sitting for their cards de visite previous to their departure. So even ghosts wanted to have their card to visit. So this one was copyrighted in uh, 1863, and this was the peak of the, the cartomania in Britain and in France. So this is a different uh, variant, a different version. There are lots of them, and this one is, uh, is, is very good. And uh, 
Yes, so they were mocking the, 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 the fad of the card de visite. Uh, everybody wanted to have card de visite, uh, their friends, themselves, celebrities. And so you could also have ghosts, cards de visite. And this is another version. This one, uh, probably the last, uh, the last of the series, they are disappearing. They are hardly visible, so they are probably living now. And so we let them in peace. Uh, so the London Stereoscopic com Company carried on with uh, the ghost in the lane. So another example of their second wave of uh, ghost uh, photographs. Here, what is it? A sp spirit with a, um, a quote by William Shakespeare. And you can see the ghost is actually flying this time. The ghost of the, the probably the dead wife of the, this man who is crying. And... Um, Michael Burr from Birmingham um, made some fun of uh, the idea of Pepper's Ghost. So this one is called A Dream After Seeing Pepper's Ghost. So this lady has been to the theater. She has been to see the, the haunted man. And she probably ate mustard at, uh, uh, during her dinner. As you can see the sign, mustard on the, on the front of ghost. And if you remember what... Uh, Scrooge said a blot of mustard could cause what well, was supposed to be able to cause hallucinations or bad dreams. And this is exactly uh, what happens here, a bad dream, a nightmare, after seeing Pepper's ghost. Uh, Burr, uh, in the 60s, carried on the, 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 um, the trend of uh, having photos of ghosts. So this is the ghost, ghostly warning, it's called. And again, there are lots of variants the ghost uh, trying to warn gamblers that uh, they are going to uh, to uh, going to hell if they carry on gambling so much and uh, maybe they should change their ways. So again, lots and lots of uh, variants, different ones. And these cars were very popular. They are not very uh, uncommon. They are quite easy to find. Uh, not always in very good condition, but not difficult to find anyway. So as you can see, several variants. And you can see also on the floor uh, another uh, allusion to uh, this time to uh, horse racing, to gambling on horses. There is, uh, you can see the hind legs of a, of a horse, so gambling, horse racing. Th these were uh, very common ways of uh, spending money. Uh, this one is also by Burr, the ghost of the the ghost appearing to the miser. He's trying to hide his money in a flower pot, plant pot, and the ghost has come to warning. Uh, another one by Burr, groups of ladies and a ghost appearing, and one of the ladies is trying to frighten the ghost away with a, with a broom. And uh, one of the, the girls is just sleeping. The, the, this girl it seems to be frightened, but she's the only one. Uh, the older lady is pouring tea as if nothing was happening. Quite a funny, funny style, actually. Uh, this one, the, the, the ghost drinking poison. So just to, to try and uh, warn the, the, the man probably that he should be careful what he's drinking. And the man looks terrified. Also ghost appearing to students and uh, maybe because they have a dissipated life sometimes. So this one, this, in this car, there is only one ghost. But in this one, there are two. Again, warning, they always have the warning finger up. This is the ghost appearing to a sick man, so, uh, and he's trying to hit it with uh, his pillow, uh, again by Michael Burr. This one, the man, the man is sick in bed, and his uh, carer is, has fallen asleep, and the ghost has appeared to tell him that, well, sorry, mate, but you won't make it. And in this one, it's even worse. So it's the same idea, again, by Burr. Uh, the idea that um, this is where you're going. You're going up, but uh, you, won't, you won't actually get cured. Uh, this is interesting. The ghost trying to stop a man about to murder a lady. You can't see it very well, but he's holding a knife. And the poor lady has fallen asleep. Uh, on a book, and the ghost is trying to frighten the murderer away. So sometimes ghosts could actually help you and save you, save your life. And this one I, I find particularly funny. This is a ghost uh, frightening a monk. And if you look at the monk, 
Uh, the person behind the monk, you can see, is actually a young girl. You can see very, very slim limbs. And so we, we may wonder what the monk was doing with a young girl outside. Not very nice, Mr. Monk. And this one, a frightful apparition. And this one, this one, you had the devil and the ghost and the... The monk was just trying to eat meat, probably on a fast day uh, during Lent. And this is the warning. The devil is warning him. This is, I'm waiting for you in hell. And the ghost is warning him, please try and do something before you meet that gentleman. And another one by a bird laying up the ghost. And you can see uh, the man trying to run his sword through the ghost again. And two of the two servants have fainted. So... Again, this is um, about 1866, still very popular. And, um, and in 1866, they really knew how to make the most of uh, ghost figures. This one is called a ghost. Uh, I hid the forbidden parts. And uh, it's actually called a ghost. And there is a poem at the, at the back. The ghost, if ghost it were, seemed a sweet soul. And it's, uh, it's from the poem. Don Juan, Canto 16, verse 1 to 9. So uh, ghosts sometimes could be made of um, flesh and blood. Now, um, after a while, stereoscopic uh, slides of ghosts disappeared, but something else appeared, spirit photography. And this man here, William Henry Mumler, uh, was actually tried for fraud and larceny in uh, 1867. So this is... Uh, an engraving from a, um, the a Harper's Weekly, and it shows uh, Mumler and two of his photographs. And uh, people came to see him because they wanted to meet the departed uh, beloved one. And uh, he took photos, fake photos, of course, and he was tried. Uh, he didn't actually go to prison, he was acquitted, but uh, he was ruined after that. And in the same newspaper, on the same day, there was this, um, this cartoon about um, Mumler and spirit photography. So Mr. Dobbs, at the request of his affianced, sits for his photograph, unconsciously happens in at Mumler's. And when the photograph is developed, this is what happens. Result, portrait of Dobbs with his five deceased wives in spirit talk. And the lady says, oh, horror. So, People were making fun of uh, spirit photographs, but a lot of people actually refused to testify against Mumler because they wanted to believe uh, the photos were real. So these are some examples of Mumler's photos, real examples of Mumler's photos. And you can see, obviously, that um, the ghosts are not uh, real. They, are, they look very flat. And again, somebody suggested if the photos had been taken with a stereoscope, we, you, you would have seen immediately that they were fake, but they were not, they were taken flat. And it's very strange because in 1869, people knew how uh, ghost photos were made. Uh, uh, the, the, the text I showed from uh, Brewster's book was actually published in the press. So people knew, knew how these photos were made. And yet they still believed in uh, spirit photographs. So here are some more of a, uh, of the memeless photos here, cards to visit, they were produced as cards to visit, not as stereos, because stereos would have revealed the hoax. Um, later on, back in the 1970s, a rising young star was getting bored <laughs> in his hotel room and decided to try and take a ghost photo of himself. And as you can see, he managed very well. I don't know what happened to that young man, but <laughs> I guess he must have had a hit or two. <laughs> Even, um, well, closer, this was in 2008. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to uh, participate in a workshop uh, with uh, the wonderful uh, Richard Kinan uh, Jones uh, at St. Andrews. And uh, we had, uh, with my assistant Rebecca, and we had uh, a workshop about the collodion. And of course, we had to try a ghost photo for the collision and believe me it's not that easy so the first photo was uh, she was really solid and the second photo you can see it sort of works but it's, it's not very easy to get the right amount the right time and the, the right amount of uh, 
transparency for the ghost. So uh, ghosts are still ghost photographs are still very popular. Uh, now let's leave ghosts for a while and see other special effects. This is one of the very rare examples of um, a person coming out of the window. Uh, this is not very common in uh, Victorian stereo. It's not common at all. Usually everything is kept in, inside the window, except you know when there, there, there are some window violations, glass and things. But people never come out of the window in Victorian uh, photographs, except this one, this uh, sort of floating floating uh, ferry by James Elliot. So not very common to see this. Uh, speaking of ferries, of course, the Cottingley Ferries, uh, this is much later, this is in uh, 1970, 17, sorry, July 1970, 17, Francis, uh, Francis um, Griffiths, yes, sorry, and Elsie Wright uh, produced those photographs. They were very young at the time, and uh, they said they had actually photographed ferries, and people believed them. And so these are the first uh, photos. They took five photos altogether, two in 1917 and three uh, later on in 1920. Because the photos, the first photos attracted the attention of Conan, Conan Doyle, who, uh, whom you can see uh, below. And he actually gave the girls a camera, a better camera, so that they could photograph the, 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 the fairies better. And they produced those five, uh, three photos, three more photos in 1920. And Doyle used the photographs to illustrate an article he was writing about uh, uh, spiritism. Uh, after the death of one of his sons, he had become uh, very much interested in the spiritual world. And so he believed these photos were real. And again, if they had been taken with a stereo camera, people would have realized immediately that the fairies were very flat. And uh, it's, it was only in the 1980s that the two girls, who were now uh, quite uh, old, revealed that uh, the photos were fake. Actually, they said that all the photos were fake except the, the last one, uh, which is uh, the, the top left one here, number five. But again, you can see that uh, uh, the fairies look very flat. And uh, one of the girls acknowledged that she had actually drawn them from a prints in, in, in the magazine, she had drawn them and cut them out and they, they were holding them with uh, hairpins. Um, they use special effects also, the, the Victorians, to uh, illustrate horror story. This is the story of Alonso the Brave, uh, the ghost of a man who comes on the day of his uh, um, former fiancé's wedding to uh, remind her that he... Um, they had promised to get married. She had promised to marry him and she didn't keep the word. So this is what the stereo looks like. So as you can see, it's not a ghost this time. It's only a dummy with a, a, a skull, a skull with hair for a head and the lady fainting. So that, that's quite clever, actually. She's probably sitting just on a stool, but she looks as if she were fainting and uh, a future husband is, uh, is lying on the floor trying to, to conceal his head in a because he's so terrified of the ghost revealing himself on the day of the wedding. There are also, of course, photos of uh, spirits uh, near the grave. So this is called the mother's grave. And you can see again, uh, see it through spirit painted on the backdrop here. Uh, this one is by Burr. So uh, if you could do a ghost, you could do angels. And again, this is called the mother's grave. This is after a painting. And uh, you can see the spirit, the angel, looking after, looking over the, the girls, the orphan girls, the orphans, actually, it's called, sorry. And uh, the, the, the gravestone is used in several of uh, Burr's photographs. And this one is a, another one by uh, Sylvester, the guardian angels. So once you, you knew how to do this, so you could, uh, you could uh, apply the technique to lots and lots of different photographs. And here, the path of life, the angel watching of a, a, a little uh, boy or girl walking. And this one is called the angel's whisper. Uh, and there is a poem on the back. Uh, it's, it's, there is a legend saying that uh, when a, a child 
smiles while he's dreaming. It's the, the angels whispering to him. So it's a very nice, beautiful car, actually. And uh, very nicely, uh, the, the, the trick is very nicely, nicely done. This one is called The Footsteps of Angels. Again, there is a, from a poem. Uh, the lady is a bit, uh, a bit solid, but uh, you can see through her in some places. So again, uh, a, a man uh, trying to uh, remember his wife, his dead wife, and she appears to him and uh, she holds his hand. So again, the, the ghost technique was used for this one. Uh, so that's another trick here. No ghost, but ladies flying. So this is the soul of a, um, Alexa Alexandra, I think. Marguerite, sorry, maybe Marguerite being carried to heaven. Uh, it's uh, again from uh, after a painting, and uh, uh, it's interesting to it would be interesting to know how they actually made it fly. Here is another one on here, same idea by a Burr again. You can see the five ladies flying. You can't see any strings, but uh, it was very, very well done. And this is the, the Little Witch by Frederick Jones, who was a photographer and who was at some point managing director of the London Stereoscopic Company. And again, well, you can see that the, the cloak of the cape is held by a probably by a wire or by a, a string but um, the flying broom is very 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 well done and here is a variant here of the same card by the same person the flying witch the, uh, the little witch sorry uh, this one is a uh, very simple it's uh, nothing special but how do you uh, create a beam of light in a studio, a beam of light falling on a baby Jesus in a studio and uh, a French photographer Henri Lefort used uh, some uh, fabric, see-through fabric and uh, and with the light and the folds of the fabric it looks like a beam of light in 3D so it's quite a clever, clever thing to do as well and this was done totally in a studio of a big barn, he had a big barn as a studio and uh, he's quite an interesting photographer. Uh, people dreaming. So this is a very simple way of making it, making, they are giving the idea that people are dreaming. So the girl in the foreground is dreaming, and there are people in the background playing uh, persons in a dream, and there is a painting on the backdrop uh, showing other people. So that's very simple, not very 3D, but it still works. This one is a bit better. This lady is dreaming uh, of a... Uh, her husband, her husband is a fisherman or a sailor and he's caught in a, in a storm at sea and she's dreaming and she's holding their baby and she hopes that he will come back home safe and she's put a candle next to the window so that he can see the light when he gets back. So that's another way of dreaming. It's after a painting again, famous painting at the time. Uh, this is uh, another one of Sylvester's cards. This is uh, the hero's wife. Uh, two cards showing the hero's wife dreaming. So now the scene has been painting, painted on ghost. And if you look at the photo in 3D, you can see through the ghost, you can see some furniture through the ghost. Not so much on this one, but much better on the following one. So first first part of the dream, uh, he dream she dreams he's uh, being very brave. And the second part of the dream, he, he receives a, a medal from Queen Victoria herself and Prince Talbot. Uh, riding next to her, and you can see a piece of furniture uh, behind the ghost on which the scene is painted. So they, they were very clever. They had very clever ideas. The Victorians, even if they didn't have the, the, the all the the things we have now, of course, Photoshop and uh, and uh, all the, the the special effects we can we can create nowadays. Uh, here is another one again with a ghost and just a ghost and people behind well lit so that you can see through and uh, you see the girl dreaming of a wedding day here. This one is a bit later, probably from the 1870s. Uh, another trick here, falling objects. So it was impossible to capture uh, objects falling. So again, they used tricks. So we, we must guess that the, the, the bottle and the glass were glued to the tray 
and they use some sort of uh, uh, grass, tall grass, to uh, to uh, imitate the, the liquid falling out, uh, out of the bottle. And if you look, if you uh, enlarge the photo very, very much, oh, it's inverted. Sorry about that. So you you have to uh, you have to squint. You see that um, the the glass has been sewn onto the trousers. Uh, this one is probably one of my favorite tricks. Uh, girls dancing the can can, and uh, this is another one by Le Four. So, how can you make people hold their legs uh, so high for 10 to 20 seconds without moving? It's impossible. But fortunately, there is a variant of that card which reveals the trick. If you look at the, at the lady in the middle, uh, just above the bottle on the table, you can see that there is there is a sort of a crutch, wooden crutch on the floor, on the carpet. You can see something with a sort of foot, wooden foot on the carpet, and this is what holds the leg. The, the, girl, uh, the girls all have their two feet on the ground, and there is a fake leg uh, underneath their skirts. So, of course, you couldn't uh, animate that, but for a um, still photo, it works very, very well indeed. Clever, Mr. Lefort. Uh, now, that's another trick, snow. So this is another one by uh, Sylvester out in the bitter cold. This uh, widow uh, with two children, she has been thrown out of the house. Uh, widows were had 40 days before they uh, had to vacate their husband's house. Uh, in Victorian times, women uh, no rights at all. They belonged to their father when they were not married, and they belonged to their husband when they were. And when the husband died, well, the house didn't even belong to them. So out in the bit of cold, and uh, you see uh, snow, fake snow, falling around them. Uh, this is uh, another one by Lefort. He loved he loved the special effects, and uh, again snow, so uh, pieces of uh, cotton. Uh, stuck on a piece of string, lots of pieces of string, and it, it seems to work quite well, actually. And you can see all the different, the, the inside and the outside, which is something I like, and uh, the people, the girls in the, in the distance. So it, it's a very, very nice thing to have the, the screen divided into two parts, the outside and the inside, inside where, where it's warm and uh, cozy, and outside where it's cold and snowy. And here is another another one. So it's uh, black snips, and, and uh, the 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 sign uh, reads uh, "pas beau," uh, which, which actually means ugly. Uh, accommodates for people on foot and uh, horse riders as well, and he shoes horses. So that's what the, what the sign says. And here is another example. Again, the contrast between inside and outside, warmth and cold, and the snow. Um, Another one, the last one, I think, yeah. The younger Ferrari playing in the dust, singing in the street in winter. Uh, this is another one by Bird for um, to uh, imitate the wind. So again, probably with wire, the dresses are held with wire, and the hat is probably held with a with a string. But it's actually it lo actually looks like a snapshot, and uh, they manage very well. Uh, another one by Le Four. This this time to illustrate lightning and rain, thunderstorm, uh, and they only use strings. And this one, a variant, people pretending to be a wet through and uh, to shelter from the rain. And it's all uh, just. Uh, but I mean. Can you imagine how long it must have taken them to uh, to uh, get everything ready for the shots? That, uh, that, that must have been something. So they had probably more time in those days than we, we do now, or they took the time to do things properly. And here is the last one. This time, not only uh, lightning and rain, but also wind. And you see the, the skirts of the ladies being blown over and... Uh, it looks again very much like this snapshot. Now this one is by um, Sylvester again with a string, but it looks more convincing actually. The strings are probably uh, thinner, 
and it really looks as if it were raining. And this one is called the departure for Boulogne, or um, maybe leaving for Boulogne. And uh, people are going on board the steamer and going to France, and they will have to quarantine when they get back. And this one I like very much because I don't really know how they did it. I think they just scratched the the, the surface of the, the emulsion of the photo because we can't see strings, but it looks very, very real to me. And it was definitely not taken uh, under proper rain. It looks a bit too regular, but it's, it's very clever. So they knew how to, um, to uh, create special effects. And um, to finish, I would like to, uh, to show you some special effects with um, still figures, with clay figures. This is one uh, card from uh, uh, NTA series uh, about mythology, and this one is about Pygmalion. You know the story. He, uh, he sculpted um, the, the statue of a woman, and he fell in love with the statue, and he asked Venus to give life to his statue. And uh, Venus actually did so. And you can see here the moment when the statue becomes alive. And you can see uh, you can see the ghost figure of the statue and the lady. And she's the only one moving the statue. The model for the statue is uh, staring at her. And there is a camera capturing the, the scene. Uh, this camera with a, a straw hat. Actually, uh, the hat is like the sun. And you can see the lens protruding. And even the camera looks surprised. So that's a very, very nice image by Enutier. He was a brilliant uh, modeler. He was one of the, the, the two modelers of the first Diagories. I'm sure you've heard about Diagories. And if you haven't, please read our book, Diagories, Stereoscopic Adventures in Hell by Dr. May, uh, myself, and Paul Fleck. And the last one, we started this talk with a, a visit to Hades, to um, the hell of the Greek, and this one is Orpheus in the underworld. Uh, Orpheus is not a, um, doesn't, doesn't play the lyre, he plays the, the organ, he's an organ grinder, and he has just turned around and so Eurydice is disappearing, and you can see her actually disappearing, so you can see her standing in the middle as a ghost, and you can see her in the, in the, in the arms of this gendarme, uh, very strange scene again, and you can see Cerberus, uh, the dog, the dog with three heads, and he has actually three heads and a couple of uh, uh, extra extra legs as well. So yeah, very nice uh, trick, special effects with uh, made with a clay. So I don't know how we did that, but um, it's very very well done. And I think that's it. So. Uh, I think now we can unmute you and uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope it was not too boring and I hope you have uh, learned a couple of things and uh, that it was uh, entertaining. Thank you very much. bit of volume, I think, Eric. Yeah, okay. So we're going to look it in... Is, Go ahead. Yeah, it's, a, it's 1140, uh, so we don't have a whole lot of time before the next uh, workshop. Good, yeah. Uh, at, the, at the time, they, 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 had, they knew of different ways to, uh, to, uh, to produce ghost stereos, so yes. So they started with the, the, the technique uh, uh, suggested by David Brewster, and then they probably found better ways of doing it. And uh, the Jim Sturb series is one of the late series, so it could have been uh, done later. It's difficult to date them because we have no information. We just they are just known as the ghosts in the stereoscope, and then, uh, and but there are so many of them. And just a quick follow-up: having made some ghost photographs myself, I'll say that 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 pattern background that you frequently see might have been part of the style of the Victorian era, but it also serves as a way to see through the ghost. And you'll notice yep. that sometimes when, when that illusion fails, it's because the ghost is white against a dark background that doesn't have much detail. And you have to find the right balance of transparency with detail behind the spirit. Yeah, exactly. Thank no, you. And I, I know you've done some wonderful photos of ghost, well, ghost-like figures anyway. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we have a question from Ron Labby. 
Ryan, you can unmute your mic. Okay. I'm unmuted. Hello? You're unmuted, yeah. yes. We can, okay. we can hear you. Uh, so um, this is a question about the Pepper's Ghost. I'm always amazed that they could make a sheet of glass big enough to cover the front of a stage back then because I see all this old clear glass that's hardly, you know, that clear. So this may not be something that you know, but I'm just asking uh, maybe the whole group if anybody knows uh, anything about how they could possibly hold up a giant sheet of glass back in those days, which was... Uh, we, we know that they started making sheet glass in, uh, for the 1851 exhibition. Uh, before that, they couldn't make big panes of glass, but uh, after the 1851 exhibition, they actually could make uh, sheet, sheet glass. And, uh, and so once you can make a, a, a one pane, which is one meter by one meter, you can probably make bigger ones. So they, they, uh, they, uh, they improved the technique again, and that's why it couldn't appear before that, that date, because they couldn't make probably before that. But yeah, it's a good question too. It would be interesting to see if there is any anything in the press at the time mentioning mentioning the size of the the, the glass necessary for for the illusion and yeah, you know, the weight and holding it up at the right angle. Well, it was it, it was they, they would they would um, it would stay on stage all the time, uh, but you would only see the illusion when they actually put the light on the ghost. So uh, so the, the, there would be the, the glass would, would would be there all the time, but people would only see through it. Right, but it, it would reflect other lights in the room, I would think, that would be a problem. Yes, that's the problem, but maybe they didn't really bother at the time. They were just uh, so, so fascinated by the illusion. Yeah, yeah. But yes, it would be interesting to see, to see uh, uh, if, if we could recreate that uh, in a theater today and see exactly what, what works and what doesn't work. Because you have to remember that uh, in those days, uh, the house was actually lighter than the stage because there was a, a chandelier in the middle and they couldn't... Uh, took the lights out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only in the 1890s they started to dim the lights in theaters, but uh, in the 1860s they didn't. So, uh, yeah, well, there must have been reflections, but maybe they didn't really bother. Merci. Like it. <laughs> Let's see, do we, do we have time for another question? I think so. I think we can do one more question. Uh, we have a question from Michael Pritchard. Michael, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Devi. Um, thanks so much for that presentation. It's really fascinating. Um, two slightly linked questions. Um, I assume that the Victorians saw these ghost stereos, stereos as um, entertainment rather than something to be frightened by. I just wondered if you'd come across any contemporary accounts in any of the the press of the time about how people responded to the, the stereographs that they were seeing. Yeah. Well, they, they were actually made to entertain. And uh, there is, uh, when they were made into glass lights for, for the, land, the magic lantern glass lights, actually, they, they were presented as a way to, um, to uh, avoid young children of being afraid of ghosts. So it was educational in a way, because, I mean, with the Victorians, it was always entertaining and educational. So it was, yes, it was a way of telling people, these are all uh, just superstitions. Uh, there, there is no such thing as a ghost. And, and, uh, and, and they, they would teach young children not to be afraid of ghosts because they would show them how it could be done. So, yes, yeah, so, so they knew, yes, it was only, only for fun. And that's why it's so, so uh, strange that uh, a few years later, I mean, 62 go Pepper's Ghost and 69 Memories Trial, suddenly there was a sort of shift and people started to believe again in uh, that spirit photographs were real photos of ghosts. So it's interesting because they knew how it was done. And are there any contemporary accounts of, about how people responded? Uh, yes, they, they were they were amused. I mean, people who, they were not frightened at all, and uh, and uh, even the advertisements in the press. I mean, for example, there was one about the ghost will be at the cattle show. Don't leave the show without buying. The, I mean, so yes, yeah, so they knew it was for fun, and but but there was this thing about. Um, uh, making fun of uh, people from the countryside. This is where the superstitions came from. And, uh, and uh, of course, we are, we are now living in the 19th century. We, we know better than that. I mean, th that was quite, uh, uh, quite funny, actually, when you look at the literature at the time. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mike. Uh, I think we can. We have time for maybe one last question. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's go to let's go to let's go to Jr. Because I inadvertently lowered his hand. Before. Oh, oh, you did. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Let's go to Jr. Then, uh, John Ripkalvis. Uh, why don't we get your question in? And and then then we'll do my question. Yeah. John, you should be able to unmute yourself. We can't hear you, John. So, Michael, why don't you ask your question while we sort out John? Okay. Um, hi, Denny. Yeah, it was kind of fascinating when you were talking about just how difficult it was to mass produce these with just the one off negatives and having to do multiple exposures to just have enough to keep reproducing them. But that almost sounds like built in copyright protection. How were those even pirated? Well, you could rephotograph them. I mean, people knew how to rephotograph everything, Zagreb pipes and uh, covered in slides. You know, I mean, they just re rephotograph the, the photo itself. Uh, there are lots of copies, copies of uh, stereos, for example, produced in the States. And you can see, you can see the, you know, the, 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 the arched round pop. And you can see the, the, the it's square around that. So you know it's rock. They photographed the, the original slide and they just cut it, uh, cut it square or rectangular. So yeah, no, they, they could copy anything. You can kind of tell that it just looked a bit off. That's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes they did, it was very clever because they actually recut, recut it the right shape and pasted it. But sometimes they just didn't bother and just uh, rec a rectangle. It's quite funny actually. I it copies of it. Thanks. Okay, I think we can hear John now. Uh, yes, I hope so. <laughs> can yeah. you? Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah, you, John. No, I, I just want to touch on uh, something that he just mentioned, and and uh, I really appreciated when they showed the one uh, slide that showed the uh, uh, supposed rain that apparently was uh, created by scratching on the uh, actual emulsion, and uh, that is interesting because he had to do it very, very accurately to keep the stereoscopic depth correct so that it matched in both the left right as far as the alignment so so yeah well you, they must have done it with a stereoscope probably good point so because you know just like people draw with a stereoscope and uh, so but, but yes I, I would love to see the negative of that card because uh, it doesn't look uh, like you know very important card but it's actually very interesting the way they uh, they uh, made the rain thank you you're welcome Okay, you know, there, there, there were two last people. I'd like to try to get everyone who had a question in. Uh, we have uh, Ilya Kachin and Ken Burgess each had a question. So Ilya, why don't you ask yours? You should be able to unmute. Yes, hi, can you hear me? We can, yes. yeah. Hi, Ilya. Uh, yes, uh, Dennis, thanks for the representation and um, generally for this uh, conference <laughs> from Moscow. <laughs> yes, I... I just wanted to ask, um, uh, I have asked in the chat, uh, whether um, are these um, uh, stereos for, for, for ghosts are available in uh, poor man's picture gallery or, or in some uh, um, other further books of London stereoscopic companies, maybe? Well, there, there is a book, but it's still uh, in uh, on a shelf at the moment. There is a book about ghosts, but it's... Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, it's been written with, I co-wrote co it with my colleague, uh, Gerlin Lorsch, Dr. Gerlin Lorsch, and uh, so it's ready to go some, someday, maybe, if there is an interest. Mm. So we'll see. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks, okay. thanks very much. Okay. And, and the final question, uh, Ken Burgess. Uh, I just had a really, uh, I was impressed by the colorization of the slides. Am I? Am I on? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, and it just, if you were talking about the production of the slides being, you know, difficult to make by the hundreds, but then the way they were colored was just amazing. I mean, the backgrounds, it, it's like the, the sky behind trees and things. It was just like perfect. Did they just have artists by the hundreds doing that or what? 
Yes, they had, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, they, they, they sold them a bit, a, a bit more, you know, uh, for, for a higher price, of course. But yes, they had, uh, they had artists doing that. Uh, oh, okay. There are not so many uh, ghost photos being colored, but uh, yes, they did that for portraits, for other, uh, lots of other stereos. And so, yes, they had uh, colorists, uh, an army of colorists. Oh, well, they did a really great job. I have to say. Yeah, they did. Thank you, Ken. Nice seeing you, by the way. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Well, we want to we want to thank all of you for coming and uh, uh, spending your your time here uh, with Denny and his presentation. Let's give Denny a big round of applause. Uh, really wonderful talk. I, I loved seeing all of the uh, the trick photography. Uh, such a great presentation, and. Um, we will be shutting this Zoom down in just a minute. The, uh, uh, the next program, the workshops, will be beginning at new, uh, at, uh, on the hour. Uh, I don't want to say noon because we have six time for all of you out there. Six minutes. So we're going to close this Zoom now. You can go back to the website and uh, uh, go into the waiting room uh, uh, in just a minute for the next Zoom. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll see you at the next event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eric and uh, Dave. And finish.